If you're struggling with the image quality of the Avatar 2, I got your back. In this video, I'm gonna give you the exact cinematic settings that I use for all my videos to take your content to the next level. As you can see in the intro, the camera of the Avatar 2 is pretty damn powerful since they introduced the 04 system with a larger sensor. So here are the two presets that I use most when shooting with this drone. The first preset that I probably use the most out of all is 4K 30fps. When shooting in 4K 30fps, I am aware that I'm not planning on slowing this clip down later in post. The benefit of shooting in 4K 30 is that you have the most natural motion blur and it's the most true to eye look that you can achieve out of your drone. So let's jump into the goggles to show you exactly step by step on how to set that up. By the way, I currently connected the goggles to my phone, which is right behind the camera. So if you see me looking right above you guys, it's because I'm looking at the screen. So first things first, you're going to change the mode. This is super important. You want to change that to manual because that way you're actually able to change all the individual settings. Once you change into manual, you want to make sure that your ISO is always as low as possible. Ideally, you don't shoot anything above 200 ISO. The shutter speed, should always be double the new frame rate. In this case, because we're shooting in 4K 30 FPS, we wanna make sure that the shutter speed is one over 60. This will ensure that you have the most motion blur and you get that true to eye look. The EV value is obviously skewed right now because we are currently indoors and we're not really exposing for this setting here. But if you are outside or in the scene that you're filming, make sure the EV value is always around minus 0.7 or minus 0.3. This is usually my go-to value to make sure that you're not over or underexposing your footage. With the white balance, you are more than welcome to keep it at order. However, I usually like to use my own judgment here. On a sunny day, I tend to use anything between 4,800 to 5,300 Kelvin. Now with the aspect ratio, it's super important to shoot in four by three because this will allow you to make the most out of your sensor. And also there's no need to crop later and post when you want to shoot a vertical video for Instagram, for example. For the video quality, we always wanna make sure to shoot at 4K. In this case, we're gonna choose 4K 30. And for the camera field of view, you always wanna make sure to shoot in white because this will allow you to later stabilize everything through gyro flow. If you choose any of the other modes such as normal or ultra wide, you won't be able to stabilize this later in gyro flow. So keep that in mind. So for the sake of this preset, we're gonna choose white. For the order ISO limit, as we discussed earlier, we always wanna keep it as low as possible. So seeing that we chose to go ahead with 100 ISO, we're just gonna keep that at 200 max. For the in-camera stabilization, I highly recommend to keep that off. As mentioned, I like to destabilize everything in post through dryer flow myself. That way I have more freedom and control later on post. And finally, the most important part is to make sure that you choose D-Log M as the color profile because this will allow you the most freedom and most creative control later on post when you wanna color grade the footage and will really enhance the quality of your content. So as I mentioned earlier, these are the exact settings that I'm using when I'm not planning on slowing things down. However, if there's a scene such as diving down a waterfall or chasing a motorbike, and I know I wanna showcase that in slow motion, I choose 4K 60. When I shoot in 4K 60, the same rules apply. There's no difference. The only thing that I'm gonna change here is the shutter speed, which will now be at one over 120, because as I said earlier, 60 FPS means double the shutter speed. And other than that, everything else will be exactly the same. Now that we have cleared up the settings with the Avatar 2, it is crucial that you guys also make use of the ND filters. With the Avatar 2, you have the choice between the ND32, ND16, and ND8 filters. Each of these filters are used in different lighting conditions and are dependent on how bright it is. For example, if it's super bright outside, I would probably use an ND32 because this will allow me to keep my settings in check and I'm still able to shoot in 4K 30 with a shutter speed of one over 60. Assuming you followed all these steps, it's really up to you to make the judgment call in the field on when to use what ND filter or what ISO, because with the Avatar 2, you should always try to underexpose rather than overexpose because it's much easier to bring back the shadows than bringing down the highlights. Now, once you get the shot, it's totally up to you to make the colors pop, lay down post and enhance the footage. But if color grading is not really something that you're comfortable with, I have created a cinematic LUT bundle, which has been carefully curated for the Avatar 2, which will allow you to color grade your footage within seconds. I'm gonna link the LUTs below. And if you made it this far, you can use the code Avatar, which will give you 20% off the cinematic LUT bundle. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions regarding the color grading process or my LUTs or anything about the Avatar, Drop them down below. I'm always happy to help and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Let's go.